Some of you recently have pointed out some sound problems in our video, like the sound of that airplane flying overhead. You might have even gone so far as to suggest a solution, such as buy a better mic, why are you too cheap to buy a good mic, or you have a million subs, why can't you afford a decent mic? Those are super helpful suggestions, thanks so much, I definitely wouldn't have thought of just buying a new mic. But the real problem is that I'm human, and some of you can relate, because being human sucks, and one of the things that sucks about being human is that you become complacent quickly. If something works 95 or 98 percent of the time, even if it's risky, you tend to overlook the possibility that it's going to fail that time, especially if it's super inconvenient. Texting and driving is a good example of this. People shouldn't text and drive. We know that distracted driving can literally kill you, but people are doing it constantly. Why? Because one time they got an important message and they were able to drive and text and everything went fine. And in fact, it probably happened a dozen times and everything was fine. It's only that like 1% of the time where it's going to be any problem at all and then it becomes very serious. Well, this happens with sound too. See, when we shoot, we tend to always check the levels on the back of the screen. And as long as those levels are showing something, it's usually fine. But it's not always fine. Take our most recent video where we went out to Ender's Island, and I didn't know until I went to review the footage that I think we were getting some kind of radio interference with our wireless mics, and it was making this terrible sound in the background. And then as an editor, I spent hours going through it trying to improve that sound a little bit because it was much easier than going back and re-recording it. And the end result was maybe better than what I started with, but still not great. Situation where a tilt screen is nice because I want to get very low to get the reflection. Situation where a tilt screen is nice because I want to get very low to get the reflection. So how does this relate back to being human? Because there is a better way to check the sound. Obviously I should put a big set of headphones on for every bit of filming and connect it to my camera, but that in itself is very, very inconvenient. and. In Hollywood, yeah, you have a dedicated sound guy, and that guy has one job, and it's to put the headphones on and listen carefully. But if you're a YouTuber like me, you're out and filming, and you're the director of photography, you're the producer, you're writing the story, and often you're also the on-camera talent. And that's too many jobs to fill. So any job that you think might not be noticed if it wasn't done, you're gonna just let it slide. And that's what we did when we went to Ender's Island. I didn't put the headphones on. Let me take a second and talk about why it's so inconvenient to put headphones on. These are my favorite monitoring headphones. They're probably not your favorite monitoring headphones, but I'm a little weird. I like these Bose QuietComfort headphones because they kill the ambient sound, and that means that I better hear what's coming through the microphone and I can distinguish it from sounds that are just bleeding through my headphones. So I'll put those in my ear, but now I need to connect this cable to the camera. So this is my favorite video camera at the moment. It's the Sony a7S Mark III, and the headphone jack is right here, not conveniently, kind of right in front of the screen. So there we go. This is what the headphone looks like, and that's kind of what it looks like when I'm filming myself. And this is okay. I can hear stuff. I can hear wind hitting the mic. That's kind of exactly what I need, except anytime you have a cable in my experience, it's going to at some point be a problem because 99% of the time of my life, I have AirPods in my pocket and I listen to them all the time. And I'm used to wearing wireless headphones, so I forget that I have a cord. And that means, especially if this is on a tripod, I will get distracted by something and go to pick something up and then, bam, I walk away. <laughs> tripod fall. Or really, best case scenario, it gets yanked painfully out of my ears. So you can imagine after dropping a few cameras and having my ears hurt, I'm a little less inclined to go through the trouble of hooking this up. But I figured out a better way, and it's fairly inexpensive, and it's not at all what Mother Nature intended. My technique is to misuse the Rode Go wireless lavalier system. This tiny little thing is actually a lav mic. You can see the microphone at the top of it there, so I could just clip that to my shirt and then clip the other half, which looks exactly like this, onto the camera. That's how Rode intended us to use it, but I'm going to abuse it. 
The first part of my evil plan is this tiny little cold shoe, which I'm going to stick right on this dead spot on the camera. Let me show you. First I peel off the backing and expose the adhesive, and now I stick it right on the edge of my brand new Sony A7S III, and voila, I have a new cold shoe. If you're the squeamish type who doesn't like to make semi-permanent modifications to a $3,500 camera, you could always get one of those mini rigs that goes around your camera and gives you lots of places to screw stuff onto. Now on my Road Go, you can see it has a little belt clip that is the exact size and shape to fit into a cold shoe. How convenient. I am going to stick this right into the cold shoe on the camera, almost like it was made to be there. You can see this particular placement still reveals the headphone jack, the charging port, and the power button, so I can still use it 100%. Now I have the smallest headphone jack I could find. I'm going to plug that into what's supposed to be the microphone jack, and then I'm going to plug the other end into the headphone port on this camera. This isn't specific to this model of camera. It would work on any camera. There, look, I even kind of threaded it through the gap so there's no extra slack. Now, what's supposed to be a microphone transmitter is acting as a headphone transmitter. Remember my favorite set of headphones here? I am going to plug these into the receiver. Normally, this would go onto the camera, but let's turn this on. I will plug my headphones into what's supposed to be the camera output. This receiver has a decibel adjustment on the top of it that I can push to adjust the volume, or I can adjust the headphone volume on this camera. I have to go into playing back a video to do that, but it does seem to work. And now I have a totally wireless headphone rig, so I can monitor the sound, but also walk away from the camera without worrying about it dragging it down. And of course, you don't have to use these headphones. You could actually attach this with a little sticky thing to your big monitoring cans if you wanted to. Whatever. Now you suddenly have wireless headphones on any video camera that you want, provided that has an actual headphone jack. And with me, what I usually do is I just drop this through my shirt here and put the other end into my pocket. I am totally wireless, and if I need to take my headphones off, I can drop them like this, and then they just hang from my shirt. This is such a ridiculous hack. I feel so bad that I even have to do this in 2020. I don't have wired headphones for any other purpose. Everything else is Bluetooth and it works just magically, including like real time monitoring stuff, at least with my AirPods. And this in fact works in real time and it's so small that it really makes you wonder, why didn't they just build this in here? After all, this does have Wi-Fi, it does have Bluetooth. There's no reason it couldn't also have even a very short range microphone and headphone receiver transmitter. That would mean we wouldn't ever have to attach anything extra to the outside. Well, I hope my little wireless headphone hack has helped you get better sound by actually checking your sound. I certainly hope it'll help me. And if you don't want to use the roads, there are actually cheaper options out there. Various Chinese companies make some. I have a whole stack of them on my desk that I'm reviewing, and they all seem to work for this exact same purpose. To recap, take any wireless lavalier transmitter, and instead of putting it on a person, you put it on the camera. And instead of connecting a microphone to it, you connect a cable to the headphone jack. This headphone output goes to this transmitter, where it is received by the receiver, which normally goes on the camera, but this time it goes on the cameraman, giving you a set of wireless headphones that you can kind of take anywhere without worrying about dragging down your camera on a cable. Be sure to subscribe for more tips about still photography and videos and lots of camera reviews, including my upcoming full review of the production version of the A7S III, which I'm also filming this on. Thanks.